boom. All right, everybody. Welcome to episode 243 of the Art Jacob Do America podcast. I'm your host in the place to be, Mr. Jacob P. And sitting right across from me is the Brown Recluse, Mr. Artro. Art, say hello to the millions. And millions. What the fuck is going on, America? We were listening to the Art Jacob Do America podcast. Brought to you by the Podbelly Network. Guys, go get me at coffee.com. Uh, check out their entire inventory of coffee beans. They have the... I was going to call it CTE oil. <laughs> um, <laughs> It'll probably help you with CTE oil. It'll help you if you have CTE oil. Yeah, Just MC- call it CTE oil from yeah. now. The MCT oil? <laughs> MCT oil. Um, guys, they got the cacao butter. They got the hibiscus tea. They had some seasonal um, pumpkin spice blends, which I always forget to mention, but those were there. I think they're, they're actually on sale right now, uh, which you can combine with promo code AMERICA to receive 50% off your total purchase price. Uh, if you forgot to get someone in your life a Christmas present, use promo code AMERICA and get them something delicious. You can never go wrong with coffee. I feel like coffee is one of those gifts that um, everybody drinks coffee. Everybody cool drinks coffee. Everybody wakes up every morning, brews a coffee coffee cup, you know, in their sucre apparel coffee mugs. <laughs> <laughs> they jump on that treadmill. They jump on the put- treadmill, hashtag, um, hashtag work in it, and then... Um, <laughs> Three emojis, three gorilla emojis, <laughs> and that's it, dude. Working it. And if you want to add something to your caveman coffee, if you want to put that coffee into something, guys, just look right in front of me uh, where you can go to sucreapparel.com. You can pick yourself up an array of different designs on your coffee mug like I have here in front of me, uh, designed by the great, the powerful Nicole Smith Boss. She has an array of designs up there, but mostly apparel. Go, Guys, go to sucreapparel.com. Uh, fill up your cart like our boy Jesus Fuentes from the Words Are Hard podcast. I believe he has stock in this company. I don't know. Uh, but he spent all of his money, all of his Dogecoin uh, on, you know, buying, you know, Super Apparel using promo code Art and Jacob. And he got himself 10% off. Uh, but he fa- he has found himself in uh, financial little, trouble. Yeah, a little bit of a pickle, a little bit of a pickle, and we need help to get him over to South Africa to meet uh, the great and powerful Nicole Smith Bosch, so we can get all of his super apparel signed uh, by possibly the next Salvador Dali. You know, I, that's what I call her. Uh, yeah. She's great. She's powerful. She's the next Salvador Dali. Uh, but let's let's make one. You know, Mexican boy's dream come true by going to South Africa. Is he Mexican? I thought it was like Colombian. <laughs> <laughs> or Guadalajara, Guadalajara or something. I don't know. That's Mexico still. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's a jungle Mexican. He's not a coastal Mexican. Uh, but anyways, uh, let's make a Mexican boy's dream come true by going to South Africa, fighting the Delta, fighting the Omicron, uh, fighting all the variants to, you know, meet his hero, his idol, guys. Uh, but we'll, we'll, we're going to start a GoFundMe uh, to help uh, Jesus get over to Jesus South Africa. Fuente, yeah. Uh, to get over there from the Words Are Hard podcast. Uh, but check that out. Check out Sucre Apparel. Buy all the stuff there. Guys, don't spend your entire uh, life savings. We wouldn't ask you to do that. Uh, but if you if you love Nicole Smith Bosch as much as Jesus Fuentes does, uh, guys. If you love love. If you love love. That's, that's what right. I always say. <laughs> What's love got to do with it? <laughs> if, you, if you love love, nothing can stop you. Hashtag working it. Three gorilla emojis. <laughs> Uh, but guys, uh, head on over there. Enter promo code Art and Jacob. Support Nicole Smith Bosch uh, with all your heart, your soul, and your love. But guys, we're not here to talk about South South Africa and Dogecoin and little uh, Guadalajara's name, Jesus Fuentes. Art, what are we here to talk about today? Guys, we're here to talk about John L. Sloppy Poppy Wheeler. I'm just kidding. I made that up. Shout out to my boy Ross, the real sloppy poppy. You, you, are you out there? You listening? Boy, I know he just got an erection. As I said that, he was like, dude, they just gave me a shout out on my favorite podcast. <laughs> I assume we're his favorite podcast. We better be his favorite podcast. I know but, we're, I know to quote Ross, we are right up there with Come Town. Yeah, dude. Come, we're no Come Town, but we're up there, I think. Mm-hmm. We're pre Come Town. We're, we're pre Come. Yeah, correct. Damn, that was a good one. Thank um, you. But yeah, this is an episode covering. John Wheeler the third. Um I actually like to propose that we set the ambiance. If you know nothing about this case, if you're just walking into this blindly, I'd like to propose this. Close your eyes, sit back unless you're driving, but if you're driving, go ahead and pull over, then close your eyes. Uh keep your hands on ten and two. Ten and two. Turn the radio off. You don't stop listening to to Jason you know, Aldean. Jason Aldean. I was gonna say 
who's a big and fat or whatever like what <laughs> big and it? rich big and rich yeah that's the name don't stop listening to big and rich um <laughs> and listen to me here so this is the time period between christmas time and new year's eve this is a weird time i in my opinion everything should be closed every this should be family time we should do this in america once a once a year where we shut everything down for a week only hospitals and police are open. Everyone else, you better have enough waffles in the refrigerator to last you for an entire week. Um, in my opinion. In my America. <laughs> <laughs> but this this household, the the John Wheeler and what was his wife's name again? Catherine. Catherine Wheeler. I, I'm gonna call her Catherine Wheeler, although I think she kept her maiden name. Um they had this tradition where right after Christmas they would just bundle up, get some fucking King Leo's pizza, and watch a bunch of movies that they ne- didn't get a chance to watch during the year. And I think Jacob had a list of movies that they were going to watch. Yeah, they had Black Swan, uh, The Tourist with Johnny Depp and Angelina Jolie, The Town. Ooh, that's a good one. True Grit featuring Jeff Bridges. Uh, a personal favorite of mine, Inception. Uh, the Social Network. A personal favorite of mine. There you go. Uh, Winter's Bone uh, featuring J-Law. No one's watching that movie. Uh, Disney's Tron. Uh, Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Shutter Island also featuring uh, Leo DiCaprio. Uh, the Fighter featuring Batman, uh, Christian Bale. Uh, Narnia. Uh, one of the one of the movies out of Narnia. Hmm. Uh, Did you ever watch that? No, I have not. That's probably why they didn't make a second one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, due Day with Robert Downey Jr. and Zach Galifianakis. Uh, Blue Valentine, uh, a very depressing movie featuring yeah. uh, the quarterback from the Detroit Lions. Uh, Meet the Fockers, uh, third movie, Little Fockers. Easy A, as well as Wall Street, 127 Hours, and the other guys uh, were out. And probably on the Wheelers' watch list. So as they're getting ready to watch 127 Hours... Warming up the King Leo's pizza from the night before. Um, she uh, gets a call from her husband, John Wheeler, saying, I'm not going to be able to make it. I have important work to do in Washington, D.C. And she's like, what the fuck? Are you serious, dude? Like, are you serious? This is our tradition. Mm-hmm. This is when we shut our phones off. We turn off the Internet. We The Wi-Fi is off. These are all rented. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we got this from Redbox by 7-Eleven. Yeah, all right. This is we're not inter- we Netflix that's a little weird right now. We we don't know. Maybe it's not Netflix isn't going to be around for the next 2 years. Actually, I think it was already around, but it wasn't that stable yet. Yeah, I still think you were still ordering movies through the mail with those guys. Yeah. Um but and I think everything we had on Netflix was like Troll Hunter and Human Centipede. <laughs> it wasn't that it wasn't what it is now. But anyways, um so that was a good game plan. Like, let's get together, hang out, watch the movies, just cuddle up on the couch, let it be cold outside, and like, baby, it's yeah. cold outside. Which to me, that sounds like the most wonderful winter wonderland ever. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he can't make it. He says he has pressing, pressing work to do in Washington D.C. And she's like, "Well, fuck, are you serious?" And they basically get in an argument, like mm-hmm. most couples would. I think most couples would get in an argument if. Um, um, if if something like that were to happen, yeah, because you have plans. Yeah, I mean, even if like you didn't verbally say it, I mean, if this is a family tradition, especially to me, like you got to keep the the holidays holy. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. whether it be fucking St. Patrick's Day, you know, whether it be fucking uh, Guy Fox's Day, whatever you mm-hmm. wh- whatever your fucking holiday is or whatever, right? You got to keep you got you got to keep those those traditions alive because that's culture. That's the textbook definition of culture, uh, guys. Uh, but especially Christmas, New Year's time, like that's that's time with the family. That's spent. That's time with your loved ones. That's just enjoying whatever you guys have to offer. That's why you work all year, you know, to get those that time off to have to have these moments that you can look back on. Uh, but like Art was saying, they have this knockout, dragged out fight and whatnot. And he's like, you know what? I got to go to D.C. Like I am a public servant, so I don't know. And again, most people probably don't know who John Wheeler is, who who went by Jack Wheeler, um, which I thought was weird. Like, why, you know, if your name, if if your government name is John, why are you going to call yourself Jack? That's that's a weird. Are you going to go from a bad name to a worse name? Yeah, exactly. Uh, but anyways, uh, who is this Jack Wheeler feller? This John uh, Wheeler feller? But well, he uh, was actually the grandson 
of a Confederate, a very famous Confederate soldier who later on in his lifetime actually served, switched sides and went to the Union and fought for the, you know, the regular U.S. Army. Uh, and he's also somebody that, you know, after high school, uh, graduated with honors from West Point Academy uh, in the class of 66, where 30 of his classmates uh, died in Vietnam. Uh, after this, uh, he uh, uh, spent time in the service as a fire control platoon leader uh, at MIM-14 Nike Hercules Base uh, up in uh, the New England area, you know, where, you know, he monitored uh, warheads. Uh, th again, this is a time around Vietnam. Um, and from 67 to 69, he graduated from Harvard Business School. Uh, summer of 68, he becomes a system analysis for uh, uh, the Office of the Secretary of Defense. Uh, so this is where he starts to become a, like a public servant. Uh, from 69 to 70, he served as a non he served a non combat position in Vietnam. So technically, he is a veteran. Uh, was he out there, you know, uh, experiencing Agent Orange and you know having to kill you know whole like uh, villages and shit, you know, with his bare hands and stuff? No, he wasn't doing that. But he he's was, he's no baby killer, man. Nope, he is not. I like my soldiers to be baby killers. <laughs> <laughs> not POWs. Yeah, I don't like it when soldiers get captured. Yeah, I like my soldiers to be winners. Yeah, there you go. Uh, shout out to to Emperor Trump there. Mm. Um, <laughs> uh, but also from 1970 to 71, uh, he sir he was employed at the ge as general staff at the Pentagon. Uh, from 71 to 72, he ser served as senior planner for Amtrak. Uh, then from 72 to 75, he graduated from Yale Law School. Uh, 75 through 76, he was a clerk for George E. McKinnon, who was a U.S. Uh, representative. Uh, so he worked, you know, for Congress at this time. Um, from 76 to 78, he was an associate of uh, Shea Gardner Law Firm in D.C. So basically he was a working at a D.C. law firm or whatever, doing, you know, law school shit or, you know, law firm shit. Uh, and from 78 to 86. Well, really quickly, he, it wasn't just a regular law firm that he worked for. It was kind of like this weird law firm that would work with companies. So, like, he was like a lawyer for companies, but sometimes he was like a private lawyer. Sometimes he was a public lawyer. Mm -hmm. He would do, like, this weird thing. I actually wanted to do a little more research in that. I had never really heard about that, like, where you're just strictly a lawyer for, for a certain company. But he, it wasn't just... I had I can't remember the term that was used for that particular style of lawyer where you're like, you you uh, work only work for companies, but then sometimes you would randomly just like work with like a personal individual. I don't know. It was kind of weird, but I I had, I got to look more into that. Mm -hmm. It happened a lot during like Trump's, both of Trump's uh, uh, impeachments and whatnot. Like you had people that were you know private and public, you know lawyers and whatnot. It's a big thing in D.C. It's, it's, it's crawling with individuals like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but from 78 to 86, he worked for the SEC um, as well as the special counsel and chairman to the Secretary of Defense. Uh, and from 79 to 89, he was a chairman of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Fund. Uh, this could be its own topic unto itself, the whole Vietnam uh, Veterans Memorial uh, Fund. I believe like when it first started, there was only $126 in the trust. Uh, but when Jack Wheeler took over, like it, it ballooned up to like uh, 128 million, uh, he was responsible for getting that erected, which was like a very controversial time, you know, with the soldiers coming back, and um, a lot of other veterans at that time being ashamed of them and whatnot. And I guess that was a bit that that was the dividing uh, stone at that time was yeah they don't deserve they're losers they didn't they didn't win the war they don't get a memorial. But he was spearheading that movement to get them their memorial. Um, mm -hmm. I believe it's like that big wall with like all the names and like even the statue that's there. It's uh, three soldiers. Uh, one's a black soldier. One's a white soldier. And uh, one is supposed to be uh, Hispanic-ish. That's to, to use one of his friends. Covered quotes. covered everybody in the MCU. Done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, got got that. Um, got all the, the Power ground. Rangers. We got the Black Power Ranger. We got the China Man Power Ranger. <laughs> we got. Isn't that how like, the? I always think like I, I look back at like the way like '90s portrayed in the '90s and early 2000s. 
the way diversity was always portrayed, it was like, all right, the leader is the white guy, duh. Uh, <laughs> they have like the hot girl. <laughs> She's the there's, pink one. There's, there's a there's a black guy, you know, just to, for the urban kids in there. He's a break dancer <laughs> and he's the black Power Ranger. He, he also tagged, but he only tags positive messages. Uh, there's also a, a China China man in there or a Chinese gal. <laughs> she's a Yellow Ranger. She's she's clearly the Yellow Ranger. Yeah, just you know that way don't get confused with the Pink Ranger. Clearly the white girl is the Pink Ranger. Yeah, it was like that was. And she's the, good at math. That's diversity, all right. Yeah, she solves all the hard problems with math. <laughs> <laughs> so the so the Red Ranger, the the white guy, can make out with the Pink Ranger, and she saw while they're doing that, she can solve in things and what the computers. They got these computers now. You could type in all kinds of things and then just mathematical <laughs> equations, just solving things, man. <laughs> it, it's called diversity, man. Look it up. Shout out to Trini. I think she actually died in September 11th. She actually died in the, the plane crash. Which one was that? The Chinese girl? I think she's Vietnamese. Vietnamese but, girl? Yeah, but yeah. She <laughs> <laughs> yes, Alex Joe. Yes, Jesus Fuentes. Uh, yeah. she, she actually, I think she actually. I've never actually seen Power Rangers. To be, what? I've, I've seen like little bits bits and pieces of it, and I'm like, wow, this this is some bullshit right here. Yeah, and in 36-year-old eyes, yes, yeah, some bullshit. Well, no, I mean, when I was like seven, I was like, this is some bullshit right here, man. Okay. To each their <laughs> own. But, um, yes, she died in a plane crash uh, in September 11th. But um, uh, he had, from 88 uh, to 2009, uh, he served for three presidents. He served for Ronald Reagan, uh, for uh George H. W. Bush and then uh, George W. Bush himself. Uh, he served um, in the office of the Secretary of Defense and in the Air Force as an advisor to all three presidents. And I think the transition team uh, going out of Reagan into uh, Bush Senior. He served on that team. Uh, he also, from '83 till I believe '87, he served as the CEO for Mothers Against Drunk Driving. Uh, as well as from 93 until he died. He served as the head of the Vietnam Children's Fund, which um, went into uh, helping you know orphan Vietnamese children um, and various things. Like that. So he's very connected you know to uh, you know the Vietnam War, you know, getting the soldiers the proper help that they needed, as well as you know the after effects of us going to war in Vietnam, helping the people there. So he was very much, in a way, a world servant, if you will. Uh, and just uh, the reason why I name all this stuff is because it's like you see this on a resume. It's just like, man, this dude did a lot during his lifetime. Yeah, this ain't no Larry Elder, right? He's not no. just a radio host. I like, have a microphone, therefore I should be the greatest governor of California. If we baptize the homeless, think about it this way. Then they're saved, so when they die, they can be with Jesus Christ in heaven and there's no greater gift than to be in paradise. Case closed, we're done. Why are we even arguing about this? Let's just <laughs> baptize them all and then kill them. <laughs> also, can we bring back diversity? What happened to the Japanese girl from Power Rangers? <laughs> Let's see a little diversity, all right? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> okay, yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> You know, Power Rangers had a pretty uh, crazy story. It wasn't just the same thing over and over. It wasn't just like they fight little and they fight big and then the show ends. <laughs> it wasn't that every there was little things that were happening in between. The, the Chinese girl wasn't just solving math equations. All right, if you look in the back, the, the black kid's dancing. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, guys. <laughs> It's funny because it's fucking true. Every episode is the exact same fucking thing. Also, one thing I forgot to mention, from 92 to 95, Jack Wheeler used to write for Power Rangers. First, uh, he, was an, he was employed by Saban, uh, the parent company that you know produced yeah. all the Power Rangers yeah, yeah, episodes. Yeah. So shout out to him. Yeah, I mean, he was like uh, in charge of a lot of defense programming. I, I know in... Uh, I think it's in Japan right now. They're building this giant Gundam robot. This is true. This is not like arts goofing off kind of thing. But there, Very elder there, there is a giant Gundam robot that is like a thing in Japan right now. So mm -hmm. I do want to check that out. If I ever make a trip to Japan, I do want to check out that giant Gundam robot. Mm -hmm. I want to see it activated. And, uh, 
and with that though like it's funny you say that um before he passed away obviously he passes away in this story uh he was employed by the mitre uh, uh corporation which was a government he was a government contractor uh towards the end of his life uh, but they dealt with ai as well as cybersecurity in military and, satellites and, and whatnot. that was his specialty there and i think it's important to put a pin in that one uh, because his big concern was cyber hacking and the potential to cyber hack a government agency and to ha- cyber hack a election. Correct. And, and this is back in 2010. I don't think we said this. No. So this is back in 2010. So this is that to me is like let's put a pin in that because that is super interesting. That and super important. Super important. Uh, that he was kind of ahead of his time. Uh, in in that regards, that they were already thinking, and I'm sure the government's usually pretty ahead of time. They know what the tre- the threats are before we even know what the threats are, uh, whether they act on them or whatever. That's you know to be debated. But he was definitely um, on top of that that aspect of uh, cybersecurity. There, um, I think Jacob has already said that he is found dead. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's just spill the beans there, and we'll kind of work our way backwards to. Quentin Tarantino this well, shit. Well, Quentin Tarantino this shit. So going back to his wife, him and his wife are arguing. His wife thinks he's giving her the cold shoulder because she's calling and texting, and she ain't getting nothing back at this point. Mm-hmm. And she's just like, well, what the fuck? We have a wedding to go to at the end. It's like, I know we got in a fight, but let's just put our differences aside. Let's just get over this shit. We're like in our 60s. We're having the worst sex of our lives. <laughs> Let's just fucking get together, get some Domino's pizza, and watch 127 hours. Um, and he doesn't show up to the wedding, and she's just like, "Well, goddamn, this guy is being stubborn as hell right now." Like, mm-hmm. let's find out what's going on. And at this point, I find it surprising that she had not contacted authorities. Because mm-hmm. uh, I believe after 48 hours, that's when you can fit 48, or I believe three days, uh, that's when you can officially, you know, file a missing persons report. Yeah, and I think it had been three days already. Like, yeah, because they get into more. a yeah, because they get into a fight December twenty eighth. Uh huh. And then he shows up dead December thirty first. December thirty first. So yeah, officially yes. Yeah. So December thirty first, um, they do contact her and they tell her we have found your husband, uh, John Wheeler. He is in a landfill. Um, we uh, just need you to identify the body, basically. The mm-hmm. usual. Mm-hmm. Um, so she's like, what? Like, she just stunned. And I think most people would be stunned if you get in an argument with your significant other and you think she's staying with her mom or if if you're, like, your dude is, like, staying with, like, oh, man, he's just hanging out with his homies. He's giving me the cold shoulder because I made him go see the Nutcracker. <laughs> and, like, now it's like, oh, he'll be back. Don't worry. We got a wedding to go to kind of thing. And then you find out, like, oh, shit, they're in a fucking... In a, I was gonna say a dumpster, but they were in a landfill. Like, mm-hmm. goddamn! Like, what in the world? Like, there's no way that that's possible. And that's fucked up too. Like, uh, unsolved mysteries. They did a fantastic episode on this. Uh, I believe season two, um, where they actually show like where the actual landfill is and like how like the the workers found them. And it's weird because it's like, okay, you get all you know the trash trucks or whatever, and I guess they all kind of like consolidate all the trash into like one humongous trash truck. And it just dumps it out on the landfill. And then, like, there's, like, earth movers that, like, have to move all the trash, like, you know, onto an island so, like, the fucking seagulls can eat it. And then they set it on fire and, you know, do a fucking, you know, democratic uh, ritual, you know, with yeah. babies and shit. But anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Uh, but it's super brutal because it's just, like, it reminded me of something out of Goodfellas, like, where you see, like, uh, the guy fall out of, like, the trash can or whatever. And he's got, yeah. like, blood coming out or whatever. And, like, it shows, like, oh, shoot, we were dumping the trash. And all of a sudden I saw this body you know, in the, in the landfill. And it's like, holy shit. And so they call, you know, authorities to come out and whatnot. And they notice that the guy has, you know, he has a West Point, you know, class ring with a humongous diamond ring on it. He's wearing a Rolex and he had a fat stack of cash, which I'm saying all this because it's pertinent. And once we get into the theories and whatnot, and they're like, oh shoot, this is somebody of importance. And once they identify the body, they found out it's this Jack Wheeler feller. Yeah. I mean, so, there's a couple of things I, I actually I think we as we tell the story now that we have set the players up now you know about Jack Wheeler you know that he's been missing he has his wife has been worried about him and he's dead he still has his wallet he's, his wallet still has cash in it he's got the West Point ring um, he had like yeah that Rolex that you mentioned um, 
so where where should we go from here? Because it, it's I, should we go back to the beginning? Yeah. So again, like I said, uh, he, December he goes 20, on his trip. Yeah, December twenty eighth. Um, you know, they're supposed to be, you know, with their little booty socks on, you know, watching, you know, Black Swan, yeah. you know, watch Natalie Portman eat out Mila Kunitz or whatever. Watch that's a hot sick. movie. It's a great movie. Even when she's turning into a swan. Mm-hmm. That's pretty hot. That is. Got me. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> got me a little hot and bad. A little bit clamped. <laughs> All of a sudden, I want to go eat some fucking fried fried chicken now, man. <laughs> uh, he gets a call, and he has to go from New York. So they have the house. Th- this house, their main house, is in New York City. Uh, and he has to, you know, go to D.C. for work. So he le- he leaves the same day, and uh, he has he's on his phone all day. So there's phone records of all of his steps that he takes. This is how we're able to retrace his steps from the 28th to the 31st. Uh, so he goes to um, his Newcastle residence um, uh, in New Newcastle, Delaware, uh, at 5:30 p.m. Uh, at 11:30 p.m., authorities say that uh, the house across the street experiences some vandalism and then what happens is is somebody set off three smoke bombs in the home now to kind of go back on that uh jack wheeler and his wife were in this like legal dispute with this home across the street from their second home uh in this newcastle area and across the street was this park called battery park it was, i guess mm-hmm. it was this historic park uh, where I believe, like, Delaware, you know, this was the, the battle site where Delaware separated from Pennsylvania because Delaware wanted to keep slaves and Pennsylvania, you know, was like, no, dude, like, that's, that's, that's some fucked up shit. Like, all men are created equal, man. Yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> we, got, we got some color Power Rangers, dude. <laughs> <laughs> we got agents that can, start, uh, yeah. that can solve math equations <laughs> and shit. Um, but, um, yeah, it was a very historic park where, you know, a lot of history had taken place. Uh, Jack believed that, you know, it should be preserved. You know, these libertards, you know, should not be, you know, building a home on that property, which, you know, they had secured. So he's embroiled in this legal dispute. What ends up happening is um, on the night of the 28th at 1130 p.m., you know, they get a report that, you know, it's say hey, it might be set on fire or whatnot. And um, when authorities get there, they discover a phone on the ground, which ends up being Jack Wheeler's phone. So, yeah, I think one of the neighbors report seeing, like, a dark silhouette uh, casting fireballs. He he calls it fireballs. Later on, they find out that they're, um, like, uh, smoke smoke grenades a little... Actually, they're not... As I was uh, looking into this, I had originally heard the term smoke grenades and thought he might have just had some, like, military-style like style of smoke grenades in his house. But they're closer to the cherry bomb type of, like... Little kid ones mm-hmm. than than the Just actual military the ones. Stands and shit. Yeah, this is not some military grade type of thing. In fact, it actually causes almost no damage to the structure itself. Um, but yes, Jack had been in a big dispute and had gotten like, I think there was already a lawsuit in place with the structure of this thing. So this is Jack was no stranger to this structure. His big claim, as Jacob was saying, this is a historic site. You can't build on this site. A lot of people think that that's bullshit, and he it was just blocking his view, which I think is more like, I yeah. think I think that that's more likely, like rich guy, like they're blocking my view. I paid so much money, and now you're building a bigger house in front of me. Like some dude with more money is gonna build a house in front of me. Yeah, how dare you? Kind of thing. It's like rich guy problems. Um, that's what I think was going on, and I think it was just being massive. Like, this is a historic site. You can't do that. Um. But it was clearly bothering him. Um, I think, I don't know about you, but I think at this point, I I think that was him. I think that was him having some kind of manic episode where he was like feeling like he's got to take power into his own hands. And mind you, he'd already been in the argument with his wife about like not staying home, you know, about going to D.C. to handle his business. He's got to go to this other house, which he, they had this other house for like when he has to go to D.C. He has somewhere to go because from D.C. to New York, it's no like... It's no short trip. So he, they had this house in Newcastle, Delaware, where he can go. You know, it's a nice in-between spot. Must be nice, right? And um, he's probably pissed off about that. And then he has to go home, and he sees, oh, fuck, here's this fucking house. They Oh, they started laying tile? Not in my goddamn that- mush. I didn't go to Vietnam and file paperwork. So these motherfucking Nazis, these libertars <laughs> can build houses on my historic park. This guy has a flag that says communism sucks. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I mean, I think he was pissed about that. I think that was him. I think when he... This is what I think. This is purely speculation. 
But I think what happened is he went over there, he tried to like cause a scene, try to show them like you're not welcome in this neighborhood. I'm gonna burn a lowercase t in front of your house, kind of thing, uh, but with smoke bombs. Uh, and then he goes back to his house. He realizes, oh shit, I don't have my phone with me. I must have lost it. This is gonna look really bad. People are gonna like start questioning me. I might need to like quit my jobs. I might need to get fired from what what's happening here. I think he starts going into a like this rage because if you if you whenever you look at the uh, photos of this part of the, like there's broken dishes everywhere. He brings out all the salt shakers, all the peppers. They're like all lined up and spilt mm-hmm. everywhere. He for some reason brings out his like sword and shield from West Point. Um, because I guess they give you a sword and shield whenever you graduate from West Point. Um, and he just throws it on the ground and then spills what to be like Comet, like Ajax, Comet. Ajax, you know, Target brand Comet. Um, up all and over. Up. Yeah, so he spills it all up, all, all up and up, <laughs> on top of all on top of his shield and his sword. Um, which that does seem a little bit weird. That seems a little bit symbolic, like. That doesn't. I almost feel like he didn't do that. Like maybe there was somebody else at, in his house at this point, because that seems a little bit strange. Also, Jacob had mentioned early on that uh, he was part of the 1966 graduating class of West Point, um, a pretty famous class. There are a lot of big names in that class. Jacob mentioned that 30 other people from from that um, class died in the Vietnam War. There was actually a book written about it called The Long Gray Line. Um, which he owned a copy of. Mm-hmm. And when they, the investigators went in there to check out that the whole crime scene, they noticed that on the kitchen table, a copy of The Long Gray Line was open, and it was just sitting there as if he was just reading it, which is kind of weird. Like, why would you just be sitting there randomly reading that? Yeah. Um, unless it was, you know, somebody trying to send them a message, some kind of, like, tie to, like, whatever m- may have been happening in his life. Um, but investigators show up. They find this mess: broken dishes everywhere, Ajax everywhere, uh, salt shakers, pepper shakers everywhere, paprika, paprika. Uh, a window is a jar, which is I thought was kind of weird because like, when's the last time you've opened up a window in your own home? Like, yeah, and it's like December in Delaware. Yeah, I thought that was super weird. I was like, why would he do this in December? Like, mm-hmm. so people were saying, oh, he just probably forgot to like close his window kind of weird though i don't know i wasn't really buying it um he left the door open his neighbor actually is the one who noticed that the door was open so he went over there to check on it and uh he said that the he said the storm door so back east like there's two you have two doors uh storm door uh was closed but the actual front door was open so a storm door kind of is like like this glass door that just kind of like insulates the home even further from like you know snow and wind and tornadoes and all that shit and then, like, your regular, you know, like, oak door with, like, you know, fucking stained glass or whatever on the top. Like, that was open. So he can see through the, the, the storm door that the actual door was open. Again, it's the end of December. Like, why the fuck would you have this open? Like, it's not the fucking July. Like, fucking, you know, 4th of July and whatnot where you can have that fucking shit be. And he thought that was weird. And he walks in and he sees, like, this, uh, what looks like to be, like, a break-in, if you will. Yeah. I mean, it totally looks like a break-in. I mean... At that point, I'll be honest with you, if uh, as a total outsider, you know, when I was initially doing this, the research for this, at this point, I'm thinking somebody must have broken into to his house. Um, now, one more thing that is important to know about John Wheeler, and I think we should start going down this road, is John Wheeler did suffer from depression. He was diagnosed as being bipolar uh, which is important to note. Because, Bipolar one too, like specifically, because yeah. I went down that rabbit hole. Of like, so when I was trying to when I was trying to solve this case. So d- d- specifically diagnosed with bipolar type one, which is like the one that uh, I didn't know that I didn't know it was bipolar one. But bipolar one is where like the emotions tend to go pretty extreme and tend to last a little bit longer, which then, is almost a good thing because like. You you can you now have like these two weeks of of knowing that you have to deal with it for the next two weeks and then oh you'll get that manic super high kind of thing it's it's a little more extreme than like the two which is a little more like longer periods of of weirdness I didn't know that I didn't know he was a one yeah and then I guess too like uh, his some of his like symptoms that he would have like he would experience hallucinations. Um, 
what else? Uh, extreme agitation. Uh, I was telling you before we started recording that like uh, it was discovered after his death. Like he was a part of like this online community, like this message board about college sports, and like he was like super pissed off about the manipulation of the NCAA and whatnot. And he was like banned or suspended like multiple times, like from this message board, just because like he would fly off like the handles, like over like stupid simple shit. They're like, why, why are they preempting women's softball to fucking do blah blah blah? Like, like it was like, like silly shit. But like when you put it into this perspective, like, oh shoot, like he was suffering from you know these these mental illnesses. Like it made sense. Yeah, I mean, definitely, it's kind of hard to pinpoint. Even if even if you know someone is going through like a manic episode or is in a state of depression, even if you know like well, that's what they're going through. E- even then, it's still like you don't know what that's going to lead to. Mm-hmm. Um, he was an extremely hard worker. I mean, he was involved with all these presidential candidates. He was working for the Mo- Mothers Against Drunk Driving, um, the Veterans Children's Fund, all these or not veterans. Uh, Vietnamese or Vietnam Children's Fund, building like schools over there. Um, he he was very involved in a lot of like definitely had his hands in many many cookie jars. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do think that that's one of those things that um, people that have uh, bipolar disorder, whenever they're going through those like manic times, and they're just super workaholics and one hundred percent all in on these things, and like people tend to applaud that without realizing like there's a healthy unbalance that's going to happen. Like there is a crash after this. Um, and I think that that's, you know, what people were probably overlooking in his life. Maybe even his own wife. I think that family members tend to just applaud the, what a hard worker. Yeah. And then, um, and then not notice that, you know, there is a crash. Like even if you're not seeing it when maybe he's hiding it from you, but there is a, there's a down, a downward spiral to this. Um, and it looks like he was still working very hard. I mean, he was doing that trip to Washington D.C. that he told his wife about. That was a real trip. He was really going on that trip. It was very much a, a scheduled trip to to do more work. I'm sure that's the last thing he wanted to do after Christmas, and then after having plans to hang out with his wife and watch movies all day. And now he's doing this, and this motherfucker's building a house in front of his house, and he just got in an argument with his wife and. Mm. You know, it might have gotten to the point where it was too much, and that was him breaking all the dishes. Mm-hmm. That was him tossing all the Ajax everywhere. And even like there was a, they said it was a tree, but it was just a really big plant. Uh, they said it was like on the floor as well. Like that just seems like, you know, just like, ah, fucking rage kind of thing. Like, where's my cell phone? And his job was very heavy on the use of his cell phone. So, like, when he loses his cell phone, I can only imagine if I lost my cell phone, I'm only, I'm just barely following like my fantasy football finals. Like, I'm just like, oh shit fucking Cooper Cup, you better get one more catch kind of thing. And I can only imagine, like, when your job revolves around this and you lose it, you don't know where the fuck it is, and you you did something silly, like smoke bomb your, you know, <laughs> across the street neighbor's house. Like, of course, I can see him going into this rage. Uh, it's also worth noting that on December 29th, you know, once it starts to become the early hours of uh, that day, Catherine's she's trying to make, you know, multiple calls to him. Like Art was saying earlier, you know, they have this wedding they need to go to on New Year's Eve. Um, that you know they got to get ready for. They got to coronate. Like, oh, what time are you gonna take a shower so I can you know do my hair and my makeup and shit like that? So she's calling him like, you know, hey, let's organize. Like, let's look past this. Like, hey, I realize like you're a hardworking man. Like, you're you're a government, you're a public servant. You know, I do. You know, I mar- I knew what I was marrying into, kind of thing. And uh, she was unable to get a hold of him at all. Uh, however, uh, John or Jack, quote unquote emails uh, his employer at the MITRE Corporation saying with a, the title saying, break-in and theft, MITRE badge uh, stolen. And basically he says, like, hey, you know, sorry, I'm not going to make it to work in the coming days because my wallet was stolen, my cell phone was stolen, as well as my briefcase, which is something that, you know, friends say, like, he never, that briefca- briefcase never left his side. And it contained, like, all those things, like his badge and, you know, all of his, like, uh, top-secret information that he had from his employer and, um, you know, he, he sent them an email notifying, basically, like, saying, like, I'm calling out from work. They stole my badge, which, to kind of put a pin on that, like, when you're, like, a government employer or even, like, a government contracted employee, that badge, like, contains, like, a lot of 
information on it. Like those chips that are like in your credit card or ATM card, like government's been using that for like the last 25 years. And it contains like all sorts of personal information. If he's working like in AI and fucking, you know, military fucking satellites and shit, uh, you stick that into your work computer and all of that shit pops up. It's like some fucking Tony Stark Industries type shit or whatever, right? And if that's stolen, you know, you're told as a government employee, like, oh shit, you need not only just notify fucking, you know, the local authorities, but you also have to uh, alert like your local FBI offices as well because there's a lot of top secret shit on there. Especially, you know, given his resume, Lord knows what was on that card. So he lets them know, uh, his employer. Uh, but the funny thing is he never lets police know, which I thought was alarming, knowing that, you know, this shit's stolen, uh, or anyone else know, like his wife, his daughter, his stepdaughters, or anything like that. No, he only let his employer know, like, hey, guys, don't expect me coming into work on Monday because this shit's all gone. I got to, you know, go through the proper steps of trying to locate it kind of thing. So uh, fast forward uh, later on in the day. At 6 p.m., he's caught on surveillance footage in his local pharmacy. One thing I think is important about that um, is at this point, he had already lost his cell phone. People don't know, at least authorities don't say where he's sending these emails from. Yeah, that's why I said air quote. We don't know if it was him or not. Yeah, so nobody knows where these emails are coming from, which I think is super interesting that, you know, we think that's him saying these things, but Mm -hmm. we don't know. Also continue, because I think that the camera is, is very interesting, too. Yeah, so at 6 p.m., so this is all happening, like, in the, 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 the earlier stuff I said, like, in the early morning stages of the 29th. Uh, but later on in the day, at 6 p.m., he's lo- he's uh, seen uh, at this local pharmacy that he frequented a lot. Again, like Art said, he suffered from bipolar and depression, and he got his meds filled there regularly. So he was on a first-name basis with the pharmacist there. Like, all the workers, like, hey, John, are you going to get your usual Diet Coke and gummy bears? Like, he, he was he was known in that pharmacy. Uh, and he's uh, s- witnesses say, like, he was just asking for a ride to Wilmington uh, because he needed to get his car, which was parked at the Amtrak station that he had there. Now, to kind of put a pin on that, uh, his wife and stepchildren and, you know, co-workers and friends would be like, John was the type of guy where, you know, he was— He was always working. His mind was on other things. And if he lost his car somewhere, like, he would just call a cab and just get a cab home rather than, you know, spend the extra 30 minutes to go look for his car in a parking garage. Uh, So I guess this is one of those instances where that happened, uh, where, you know, in Wilmington at the Amtrak station, you know, where, you know, between D.C. and New York and, you know, his other home in uh, Delaware, like, he just left it there. He's like, you know, fuck it. I'll just get, you know, a cab and get home, and I'll just pick it up another time. I'll just pay, like, the... uh, enormous tab you know when i have time or whatever uh but he was trying to get a ride to wilmington to get to his car because you know he had to get something out of the trunk uh you know many people thought like oh maybe it was his briefcase maybe it was other items like a spare phone or something like that uh but uh employees say that you know he was asking for a while and even the pharmacist himself was like hey let me just call you a cab and i'll get you there he's like no 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 no. i just need you need someone to personally drive me there i don't want to take a cab or anything i need someone to personally drive me there which didn't happen until about 6 42 p.m so i think that that reason why he wanted someone to personally drive him particular somebody that he knew i think that sounds like someone that's really afraid and it sounds like at this point either he had already gotten beat up. If you look at the surveillance footage, he looks a little disheveled. Uh, he'll look a little more disheveled later on, but mm-hmm. he does look a little disheveled. Um, he looks like he's walking with a limp at this point as well, mm-hmm. which people had pointed out. Um, you know, that's kind of abnormal. He didn't normally walk with a limp like that, but now he is. Um, and I know that down the line, they do find out that he had suffered a heart attack somewhere al- along the line. It's kind of hard to pinpoint at one point mm-hmm. he had the heart attack, but he, um, you know, whenever people have heart attacks, I forgot what that, um, there's like a protein compound that builds around your heart whenever heart attacks happen. And he did have that even, if, you know, once he was found dead, he still had that around his heart. So uh, they know that that happened. They just don't know when it happened. Like it was, these are all, all these surveillance videos are happening like within hours of each other. Mm-hmm. So it's pretty tough to say. Um he he looks totally, you know, kind of messed up here. He does get a ride from somebody at that point. He gets somebody offers a ride to give him a ride to this uh this uh parking lot complex. Mm-hmm. 
He gets into the car, which I think is super fucking weird. Like, who offers a ride? Like, I would never hear some overhear someone going like, "I need a ride to this." Even if you look like you're like this, like Washington D.C. looking dude, I'm not fucking giving you a yeah. ride, dude. <laughs> yeah, I'm not either. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but somebody does, and at 6:42, he's captured on uh, surveillance footage at a parking gal- garage uh, that wasn't the garage where his car was at. Now. Again, this is consistent with, you know, what his family would say. Like, he would get confused easily. He was bad with direction. Uh, but I also thought that was kind of bullshit when his family's like, he's the kind of person that always forgot things. And I was like, dude, either at that point, like, he just has, like, dementia or, like, nobody's that forgetful. Like, mm-hmm. I thought that was kind of bullshit. Yeah. Maybe he had early signs of dementia and they had not diagnosed that. But that was, like, way, like... That's a forgetful. Yeah. Like <laughs> that was like way, way forget more forgetful than like the average person mm-hmm. that just forgets where they parked at Disneyland or whatever. But e- I mean, even if that was true though, it was like kind of like because every like podcast or even like unsolved mysteries, like when they were covering it, it was just like oh, all of a sudden like he was forgetful and it was like no, like this is something that throughout you know the later stage of his life he he had been doing this kind of thing, so it wasn't just like a uh, that time frame to period thing that had happened, but. Uh, he's caught on the uh, footage, you know, walking around even, you know, more disheveled. Uh, and he's walking around with just one shoe on. He has one shoe in his hand and, you know, the other shoe is fucking barefoot. Yeah. At the end of December in fucking Delaware and whatnot. And so the, the parking lot attendant, it was like, sir, do you need help or do you need money? Because she thought like, hey, maybe it's a homeless person because he was just like, no, uh, I just wanted to get warm real quick before, you know, I, you know, look for my car. And she's like, um, are you sure? And she goes, yeah, man, I just I just really need to get my briefcase. My briefcase was stolen. I need to find my car. My briefcase was stolen. She kept saying, like, hey, do you need, like, a ride home or something? And she's like, no, I need – my briefcase was stolen and whatnot. And so, like, it, they, the camera kind of, like, just follows him throughout, like, the parking garage. And it kind of looks like he's, like, trying to hide from somebody because, like, he would look down a doorway and, like, kind of, like – you know, like hesitantly, like go through, like okay, there's gonna be some Russians, you know, at the other end, or the putty from the Power Rangers mm-hmm. is gonna be at the other side, or the the Asian, the Asian Power <laughs> Ranger is gonna be doing a math equation, uh, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's pretty scary shit. Um, I so I heard people saying that that I never saw that, like I didn't get that vibe when I was watching him walk around. I didn't get that he looked like he was looking out for people. He just looked fucking disheveled, like. Mm. He he like literally looked like he had gotten beat up or something or yeah. like or suffered a heart attack and like now is like in a daze. Like he's clearly not all there. Or even if he's going through like an episode, like I've had that too, where it's just like I got all sorts of things going on in my mind and I need to walk it off. Like I have a mission at hand that I need to get to. Like he needs to find his car. You know, whatever he was looking for in the car. Like it's like I need to get there. But then my mind is racing. There's all sorts of other things coming in. There's my wife's tripping on me because I went to work. Like, chill, bitch. Uh, there's this fucking, you know, liberal asshole across the street building on Battery Park in front of me, b- building a bigger house to me mm-hmm. kind of thing. I got the fucking Asian from fucking uh, <laughs> Power Rangers. Her ghost is over here fucking <laughs> doing the fucking Pythagorean theorem and shit. Like, I, so I kind of get, like, that vibe, too, where it's just like he's he has, like, all these racing thoughts. He has a mission at hand. You know, he's a good soldier. He's got a mission at hand, but he's got all these other things that are, like, flying in his mind at the same time. Yeah, and at this point, he's not even in the right parking garage. No. Uh, He couldn't even specify which parking garage he was supposed to get dropped off at. This is where a lot of people have issues with with, uh, the uh, surveillance cameras. And I mentioned it to you that there wasn't a lot. This is a part of uh, the city that has a ton of surveillance cameras. Mm -hmm. And... um, People were like, how come there's not more footage? Uh, There's footage of him when he ends up in a hotel, and he's walking around the basement of this hotel for, like, eight hours straight, and nobody thinks that that's suspicious. Like, where's security? Like, how did he get (laughs) here? Uh, I think at one point he asked to speak to, like, security management, and security management's like, oh, okay, we'll be right there. And then by by the time they come, he's already gone. Mm. Um, But very, like, strange things were happening there. Like, that things that weren't adding up. Uh, at one point he goes from looking like this, like business guy that's totally like disheveled to like all of a sudden he's wearing his like hoodie. Like he's going to go to a fucking rap battle, like fucking freestyle battle, fucking Eminem. Yeah. Like, he an like, mile. puts the hood up and all this stuff. And, 
he nobody knows where that hoodie came from. Mm-hmm. Apparently, there should have been a camera in the break room, which is what people thought. Like maybe he stole one from one of the people in like their locker rooms. Possibly, but then it's like, how come there was no footage? Unless, and then there's always this possibility that the police don't want to release certain par- certain certain uh, videos, and that could be one of the videos where he goes and steals a hoodie. And then just walks out with it. Kind of like the Elisa Lamb fucking Cecil Hotel shit. Yeah, yeah. There, there's some. And then I'm glad you bring up the Elisa Lamb one because the Elisa Lamb story is like so like well documented. There's podcasts, there's documentaries. And yeah, I know that the there's an unsolved mystery one of this one now, but that's, you know, 11 years later. The Elisa Lamb one's been like this like internet thing that's become bigger than its own story at this point. Like it is super dissected. Every podcast, I'm sure. Words are hard has covered Elisa Lamb by now. Like it's everybody covers Elisa Lamb. Yeah, um, we did in our beginning stages. We, we did it. Everybody does it. Like every you got to cover Elisa Lamb. Like how do you yeah. not like have a that's podcast? A, that's the pink Power Ranger. Or that's the, that's <laughs> the yellow Power Ranger, dude. <laughs> the origins of the pink or the yellow Power Ranger. But anyways, um, uh, it's it's a it's one of those stories. I feel like this story is a higher profile name. Is is a bigger like of consequences that this dude's gone missing. Like this guy had ties to like national defense and all these things and like mm-hmm. and it's never really spoken about. I didn't know about it. Yeah, I I heard about it and I then I watched that doc the um the Unsolved Mysteries and I completely forgot about it till you mentioned that you were like, There's an episode about this on Unsolved Mysteries and I was like, Really? And I was like, Oh shit, yeah, there is. I've seen this before, but I totally forgot about it. <laughs> um but it's I find it so, I don't want to say funny, but interesting that it's it's gotten so like washed over. Mm-hmm. I talked about how the chief of police in that city said, "Let's not make a big deal about this case," like, which I guess in a weird way, everything technically adds up. Like, he was suffering from dementia, he or not dementia, um, bipolar. bipolar disorder. He had a heart attack at one point. He probably was cold, as Jacob has said. It was winter time. Um, the big thing that happens after he leaves that hotel where he randomly walks out wearing a hoodie is that the next time they anyone sees him is falling out of a trash can out of a out of a mm-hmm. dumpster um and the thing that's weird about that is that that dumpster is fourteen miles away from the last time they saw him on- they saw him on video so unless somebody just like grabs him and throws him into a car and then drives into a different location he had to walk some other camp, like some other camp. There's a fucking Seven Eleven there or something, <laughs> where like footage should be shown of him at least walking by. Yeah, I mean, there's not a, a too many fucking back alleys that you can go 14 miles without being picked up on camera or whatever, unless police are like you know not releasing something because of you know something else or whatever. Um, but yes, like when he's in that hotel basement for those eight hours, uh, he did run into a couple people. Some people were saying like, hey, he needed a ride to Philadelphia which I thought was weird. Um, also, too, um, w- the last footage that they have, uh, he was walking past uh, the Hotel DuPont going, let's say, south. I don't know which direction you know New York is, uh, but he's headed south. So he's going one direction, uh, but where they figure out the trash that he was accumulated with came from was New York, New York, Delaware, not New York, New Jersey which was in the opposite direction. So it's just like he would have either have to have come in front of that building again in the opposite direction or, you know, he ran into somebody and then they stuffed him into a dumpster, you know, 14 miles in the opposite direction in a car. And, you know, this is where, you know, he meets his fate. And, you know, the the garbage dumpster when they come and pick you up. Now, in the Unsolved Mysteries episode, um, they interview... Uh, one of the you know garbage truck drivers, and they say that there's hollerers. We call them hollerers. You know, during this t- time period, like you know, it's cold. There's a lot of homeless out there that you know will look for warmth in these trash bins because you know. And he shows. He goes, "This is a 75 gallon. Uh, you can open it up in two places right here and crawl in, or you can go to the 120 gallon one. And there's a door right here you can sm- um, swing open and you can crawl in." And he says they call them hollerers because once you start to put your forks into the trash can. You know, people will pop out and be like, oh, hey, 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 I'm in here. Uh, And anybody that's seen the first Ninja Turtles movie knows that, like, hey, like when Casey Jones, when Shredder falls into, you know, the the garbage truck, you pull a lever and it smashes the the trash down and it kind of compacts it so you can get more trash in there. 
and the, the driver that was on that route, you know, in the business complex that they confirmed that the other trash around his dead body came from, he said, no, I didn't see any hollerer. There was no, there's nobody that popped out. You know, I even had to jump out of the truck, you know, to, you know, get most of the, the bins, you know, to, to hook onto the truck, right? Because, you know, it was, it was Christmas, you know, there's more trash than usual in these things. And so it was like, no, like if somebody was in there, like I would have, you know, known if they were alive at that time period. And no, I didn't have any hollerers or anything in there. And so I think that's, that's important to note as well. So what I think happened, now this is me trying to piece together a story. He's walking down the street. Let's paint the picture again, if you will. He's in the. He's still probably hot with the argument with his wife. He's like, I'm trying to do my patriotic duty by serving my country, trying to stop the Chinese from hacking into the election. We're going to get a goddamn fucking game show host as a president if I don't fucking come through kind of thing. And then these fucking assholes want to build this fucking house across the street from me. Fucking the ghost of the Yellow Rangers over here doing quadratic of formulas and shit. I got, I got the Yellow Ranger trying to hack the Pentagon. And this goddamn black hoodie smells like mildew, motherfucker. Mm. It's called a shower. And so he's probably pissed off. He's walking down the street. And given what we know, that he did have a temper. He was banned from some message boards and whatnot. Maybe he ran into somebody and he, he looked at him the wrong way. Uh, he said something. He felt a little tough in the moment because he, he was a pretty big guy. Now he was he muscular, big. No, he, he was he was a thicky, thicky, thicky dude, right? And maybe he just felt confident in that moment, and he said something wrong to the wrong guy. He got his ass beat because the coroner's uh, final determination was that he died with uh, blunt, blunt force, force trauma. trauma, and you know they detailed that you know he had blood on his cheek. Um, he had bruises to his face, his orbital bones, temple, and mouth, which indicates, you know, he caught hands. You know, somebody was, you know, beating the shit out of him in the face. Uh, he had punctured lung, broken ribs, and there was bleeding inside of his head. He had hemorrhaging inside of his head, which kind of indicates, like, hey, he probably got in a fight with Francis Ngannou. Uh, he was probably suffering on the ground. They probably stuffed him in a trunk, ran him 14 miles up to Newark, put him in a dumpster, and boom, they find him New Year's Eve, you know, in the trash pile. So do you think that that happened after he left the hotel? I think possibly. Now, I'm not convinced of it 100% myself, but that's the only logical thing that I can come to. Yes, he did suffer a heart attack. Maybe that heart attack occurred, you know, while he was getting his ass beat. Or maybe he was suffering the heart attack while he was going through these episodes. Because I've known a couple individuals who have had, it doesn't necessarily have to be a massive heart attack where you're not, you know, walking around or whatnot. Um, it could be like like a like a little heart attack that could have been exacerbated while he was walking away from that hotel. Yeah, so, I mean, I th this is the part that's really strange to me because if it was that brawl thing, then there's no way that they don't have some kind of footage of him walking in more cameras, mm -hmm. and then maybe the police are hiding something or don't want to give away everything so somebody can come forward. Maybe they have more evidence. They're not showing all their cards. Correct. Uh, so that's a possibility there. I don't know. So, like, the thing that keeps coming up to me is keeps coming through my head is um, this dude was in a fucking trash compactor, like, being rocked around, like, being tossed mm -hmm. into trash. I agree. Being, like, how do you determine, like... Like Shredder from the Ninja Turtles when they compact it, yes. Yeah, it's like, how do you determine, like, oh, this came from a fist or like this came from like a baseball bat or whatever like it is and this one came from like just being in a trash can being rocked mm -hmm. like because i think either one he wasn't going to survive the trash no like, like the trash compactor like that one was done you're I, i'm sure that explains the punctured lungs yeah like like some of it it just feels a little, little bit fishy like i don't know if that's just the city saying like we don't want to take responsibility like this guy might have been alive when he was in the trash can and if we tell the public that he died while being com trash compacted. Um, I didn't look into how many times that happens a year where homeless people get crushed in the... Apparently a lot, according to the, the dudes in the Unsolved Mystery. Uh. <laughs> I know that they say, like, oh, the hollerers come up, and they're like, oh, man, I'm still sleeping in here. But how many times a year does it happen where they're, like, at the at the trash dump and then, like, poof, some, like, homeless Body. dudes in there? Like, it's, it's all so weird to me that that one there's not a lot of footage two he gets the hoodie three where where are these emails coming from like there's so many like little things already and a, a lot of it we have to just say oh he has 
he's bipolar mm-hmm. or oh he must have got jumped somewhere along the line and and i agree that's a b- big possibility but there's already like so many like little things that aren't adding up like i can understand if like one or two of these things somebody has a manic episode and then like they go missing and then they get found you know drowned in a river like yeah. the smiley face killer thing or whatever like i always think like oh that's very possible like you're drunk you fell in the river mm-hmm. you know whatever whatever something weird shit happens this i feel like it's like so many like little weird things that after a while you're just like yeah something either the police are hiding uh, keeping something from us or they're or there's like a bigger like you know conspiracy unseen, unseen conspiracy here yeah yeah no i ha- I almost hate to use that word just because it's like oh you're the democrats you know mm-hmm. obama was in president right here and hillary hillary mm-hmm. came and uh fucking dumped him in a trash can uh i did see some of that and i conveniently rolled my eyes uh there's three main theories uh floating around the internet uh that maybe it was a kill for hire again like we mentioned he was a government contractor at the end of his life Uh, And that briefcase contained, you know, a lot of national secrets in regards, you know, hacking elections, you know, all sorts of things like that. Uh, Some people said with no proof at all, like what if it was a Chinese national, whether it was a uh, a Russian, you know, agent uh, was uh, KGB or some shit. Uh, Maybe it was a rival, you know, from, you know, the other political party. Uh, who knows? Uh, but there's absolutely no proof to support that. Again, it's like those conspiracies, like where you're you're oh. trying to draw strings to what it is. I don't think it was that, just because of all the footage of him looking disheveled and and whatnot. I, I don't think it was that. I don't. That's the that's the type of shit you see like in a James Bond movie. This is that's not real life. Uh, one of the other ones was it was that was a random mugging. I don't subscribe to this one either just because it was like, hey, when they found him in the trash heap, he had his class ring with a big-ass fucking diamond ring on it. They found, you know, he had a Rolex on him. He had his wallet with a bunch of cash in it. All of his credit cards were intact. If you were going to be a mugger, uh, what are you going to do? Just mug him for his fucking, you know, black fucking eight-mile jacket or whatever? Like, that doesn't make sense. And then you're going to stuff, you can go through all the trouble to take his thick ass and put him in a dumpster, but you're not going to, you know, at least take his fucking class ring? Like, that doesn't make any sense to me either. And then the third one was just that, hey, maybe it was just an accident. He was going through, you know, a manic episode. Uh, he was walking around. Obviously, he, he either took the coat or he already had the coat with him because there was receipts later on that they recovered uh, that he bought like a full face ski mask and dark clothing when he bought the the smoke bombs and whatnot. They did find that in the the house in Delaware. Um, but yeah, maybe it was just he was having a manic episode, and you know that hoodie didn't provide enough warmth for him, and so he was lost. Found himself, you know, in New York somehow, and was like, dude, I need to get in, you know, for some warmth. We do know that when he was in the other parking garage he was just at telling the the tenant like hey i just need to get warm real quick before i find my car so maybe he just crawled into a trash can suffered the heart attack trash compactor boom new year's eve found in a trash heap yeah i think it's it's very likely that nothing happened like i think that that's actually the most possible thing mm-hmm. though like literally nothing happened he was having a manic episode he was kind of like just angry about that house being built across the street. So he goes and he takes care of that, but he knows he has a duty to go take care of. So he goes to Washington. He's still kind of upset. He thinks he's going to get in trouble for that, for the mess he left at home. Like that it's, it's very possible. Like all these things are very possible that that's all it was. And I actually think that that is what happened. Like, I just think he was going through an episode Mm -hmm. and, that's what happened. The only thing that throws me off is then why would the police say that the cause of death was blunt for trauma and that it was a um, homicide? It was his label as a homicide. I almost think that that's w- weirder. Like, it's almost like, couldn't we have just said, like, the trash compactor did it? Like, yeah. I, I feel like the trash compactor did it. He might have gotten, like, somebody shoved him or something and then, like, broke a bone or something and, like, maybe he was asking somebody for help and, like, you know, he's in a part of the city where people don't go up to people asking for help. So it's like, get the fuck out of here, man. Mm-hmm. And they just shoved him. Didn't realize he was carrying a Rolex and a bunch of money on him. And like, maybe it's something like that. I have no idea, but this is one of those cases that, that is, is 
is interesting that it, there's so many like little details that are missing. I I'm pretty sure the police don't aren't giving away all the information on this one. Yeah, I get Elisa Lamb vibes like all the way around on this as yeah. well. Yeah, I think that there's more more to the story than than we have been given the info to. Because it doesn't, there's a lot of things it, it doesn't make sense, and even like one of like the investigators or like internet sleuths that the unsolved mysteries had on there, he says you go down one rabbit hole, and you start to go down that path, and then something just doesn't add up or make sense, or you c- got to conveniently forget about some other something other some other thing, and it just boggles the mind kind of thing. And it's like one of those things like we just got to be like content with saying like i don't know what happened you know the only thing that that fucking matters is is that his family they don't know what happened and like that sucks you know when you watch the unsolved mysteries episode you could tell like that's got to be eating at his wife a lot because like the last things that she got to say to him were in an, the form of an argument you know and this was like the love of her life you know it was it, you know that's that's fucking sad you know like yeah, yeah, yeah. especially around like christmas time and the holidays like you got to live with that like forever kind of thing so that sucks yeah also his uh wife's face <laughs> looks like it was made out of fucking clay dude it's it's hard to see her face yeah. um but yeah i agree with you i think you know you never know when you're when like you're not gonna get to see people again mm. so like, just be nice to people yeah or don't don't be nice, but god damn, dude, her face is like hard to look at. It is, it's bad. It's like Michael Jackson bad. <laughs> oh man! So, <laughs> well, that said, R, do you have anything else? <laughs> no, that's it. Tell your mommy a boo boo too. Shout Elizabeth Jackman. Shout Elizabeth Warren. That's it. Yeah. So, uh, well, that said, guys, if you if you think that you can solve you can solve this unsolved mystery. Uh, you want to get at us so we can give it to the producers of Unsolved Mysteries and we can get on, you know, for season three. Uh, hit us up on all the social medias at Art and Jacob Do America, except for Twitter. We're at Art and Jacob Do A1. Because Art, that's how a steak's done sometimes, man. That's true. Dude, I can't wait to see the comments on the uh, Facebook. I'm mean, not the Facebook, the uh, the YouTube one. Because I feel like that's all the people that like only check us out whenever like they come across something like that they're interested in. They don't know anything about the podcast. I bet we're going to get so much hate for this one. Yeah, you guys are racist against Asians. You guys hate the Buddy Patrol, dude. <laughs> every episode's not different. Every episode is not. Dude, you're you're crazy. There's one episode where they're, like, little, and then they get big, but then they realize that, like, they got to get little to get <laughs> big. <laughs> you know, that's it. Give us our uh, your full-fledged review on the fucking original Power Rangers episodes. Uh, but also, guys, if you want to support this uh, podcast, uh, if you like what you're hearing today and you want to hear some more shit, guys, head on over to the pot, not pot, no, head on over to the Patreon at patreon.com slash America, where every week we put together a bonus episode for you guys. Uh, head on over there, pledge $1, and you'll get a bonus episode every single week. If you also want to support us in another way, Head on over to artjacobdoamerica.com where Art has supplied links to our merch store at T Public, uh, where you can buy four different designs. Uh, and I always say, guys, it's not so much to help us monetarily because I think someone bought a sweater during Christmas time and was like, "Congratulations, you earned forty-five cents for this forty-five dollar sweater." And it's just like, okay, that's cool. It goes into the piggy bank or whatever, right? But no, that helps us advertise the podcast so if you want to support us and you don't want to commit to a dollar every single month or whatever you just do what you just want to do a one and done kind of thing just buy a t-shirt buy a mask buy a coffee mug whatever you want to buy uh but buy it and it helps it's like you're a walking billboard getting the good word of the orange jacob do america podcast out to the universe uh so do that uh if you want to hear other great podcasts uh head on over to the pod belly network over at podbelly.com where the great and powerful soul for king they probably have already covered this topic i'm not sure they're like on episode like 859 or some shit yeah, or whatever they're covering soybeans <laughs> like man they're they're a good podcast they're a good podcast uh or check out my homeboy Ed. if you want something a little bit different uh check out my homeboy eddie at the rrbg podcast where every single week he interviews like some celebrities, some comedians, some musicians, you know, somebody in the entertainment industry uh, has a good time with them. But other than that, Art, that's all I got to say, man. Same here. Yeah. Uh, have a good night. Enjoy. I hope I hope you guys have your own takes on this. Do your own research. Yes. Because uh, this is definitely one of those topics that is uh, 
it's uh, it's super layered. It's kind of hard to like. I don't even know how I feel about this one, to be honest with you. Yeah. Like, normally, I have a like I at least have some way I'm leaning. This one, I have no idea. Yeah, this one. I mean, I know I threw some theories out there. It's something that I thought. I don't even buy into my own shit or whatever. There's holes in that as well. And like I said, like I said, I was like, sometimes you just got to be be content with saying that I don't know. We don't know. So, yeah. uh, with that said, everybody, I love you and goodbye and good night.